What the heck is going on in the DC Extended Universe? Here's everything you need to know about the DCEU. Sometimes it feels like there's a crisis going on in the DC Extended Universe, and I'm not talking about one that takes place on Infinite Earths. The shared cinematic universe inhabited by the likes of Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, and the rest of the Justice League has gotten off to a bit of a rocky start, but it seems like DC is finally hitting its stride. But with so many movies being announced, delayed, shuffled around, it can be difficult to keep track of what's actually going to make its way to the big screen. So to help you make sense of it all, today's episode of The Dan Cave is going to tell you everything Warner Brothers and DC have coming down the pipeline. Aquaman. Christmas is coming early in the form of Jason Momoa's whiskey chugging, denim in the ocean wearing, my man yelling Arthur Curry, aka Rockwaman. This will likely be based on Aquaman's New 52 reboot from Jeff Johns and lean pretty heavily into the Throne of Atlantis storyline. Much like Wonder Woman, this is probably going to be a prequel, but fingers crossed we get a post credit scene featuring this iconic Aquaman moment. Yo, leave him alone. We're talking. My man. Shazam! What if a child who wanted to be an adult didn't turn into Tom Hanks, but rather Zachary Levi in a muscle suit? That's the core conceit behind Shazam, and no, I'm not talking about that apocryphal Sinbad genie movie. This is about a foster child who's imbued with incredible powers by an ancient wizard and has to stop the evil Dr. Savannah from destroying the world. And I know it sounds silly, but honestly, this movie looks like a total blast and gives off major Sam Raimi Spider-Man vibes in the best way possible. Even better, if they can get someone half as iconic as Macho Man Randy Savage to make a cameo. Oh, is ready. Dan Saw's ready too. Joker. While the idea of a Joaquin Phoenix starring Joker movie from the guy who directed The Hangover produced by Martin Scorsese sounds like an elaborate prank, it isn't. It's a real movie. It's an elaborate series of adjectives about a hard-boiled 1980s thriller that shows how the Joker went from nameless nobody to the clown prince of crime. And honestly, the bigger challenge here is going to be explaining how Joaquin Phoenix transforms into Jared Leto because, like, that's got to be way more than Benjamin Button disease. Like, something went very wrong there. Like, he fell into a melted hot topic and then someone, like, poured a vape on top and now... Act! Ack, ack, suicide squad, baby. Birds of Prey. In a Gotham City without Batman, who can stand up to the nefarious evil of organized crime? Batgirl, Huntress, Harley Quinn, Black Canary, and Detective Renee Montoya. That's who. Based on the comic of the same name, Birds of Prey follows this band of badass ladies as they try and stop the murderous crime lord known as the Black Mask, played by Ewan McGregor. DC continues to dunk on Marvel by hiring way more female directors than they have, and Kevin Feige's just busy spinning his wheels talking about Phase 12. DC has tapped Sundance standout Kathy Yan to bring this movie to life. And also, DC now has technically 100% more Ewan McGregor in their cinematic universe, which I think gives them the superheroic high ground. Yippee. Cyborg. Booyah. He's part man, part computer, all superhero. He's Cyborg. And the only thing I really know about him in the DCEU is how prominently Dr. Pepper factored into his origin story. Do you remember those shots in Batman v Superman, Donna Justice? There was Dr. Pepper in every single shot of Cyborg and his dad. What's the, what's the message here? Dr. Pepper, drink us while your child is on his death, man. Yikes. In all seriousness though, right now, apart from star Ray Fisher, the Cyborg movie is a bigger question mark than those ones on Matthew Lesko's suit. That's a joke for like two of you. Remember Matthew Lesko, the guy on TV who wore like the question mark suit and was like, free money. Wonder Woman 1984. The year was 1984, and it was a watershed moment in human history. It gave a cinnamon toast crunch, the NES zapper gun peripheral, and everybody's favorite soda, Slice. And now it's giving us a Cold War era Wonder Woman story with shoulder pads galore, Kristen Wiig as the feline fatale villain Cheetah, and Steve Trevor's ghost doing his body weight in cocaine, baby! Actually, I, I don't know about that last one, if it's true or not, but I have no good explanation as to why Steve is back from his ill-fated flight, so I don't know, maybe it's like a Weekend at Bernie's situation and Wonder Woman's like, oh, Steve's fine, he's doing great. Maybe it's Earth 2 Steve, or maybe, and hear me out, just maybe, it's cocaine. The Flash. 
Come closer, my boy, and let me tell you about the legend of Flashpoint. Some say that on a dark and stormy night just like this, there will be a live-action Flash movie about one of the wildest storylines of all time. It stars professional cosplayer Ezra Miller, has between 1 and 30 directors at any given time, and has the power to completely reimagine the DC Extended Universe. But somehow, much like Godot, we have to keep on waiting for it. And waiting. And waiting. Seriously, is this ever going to come out? Last we heard WB tapped Spider-Man Homecoming co-writers John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein to direct this movie, which is supposed to adapt the story arc about Barry Allen going back in time to save his mom's life, only to accidentally create an alternate timeline where everybody's killing each other and the world is on the verge of destruction. But hey, you know what? This movie, this, it could happen. Crazier things have happened. I mean, namely the fact that Gorilla Grodd has appeared on TV multiple times before this movie ever came out. That's pretty fucking wild. He's a gorilla. The Batman. Much like there must always be a Stark in Winterfell, there must always be a Batman movie looming on the horizon, and Bruce Almighty does this movie loom. Originally, the movie was supposed to be centered on a battle between the master assassin Deathstroke, played by Joe Manganiello, and Batfleck himself. But that version has seemingly been scrapped as creative differences brew behind the scenes between Ben Affleck and director Matthew Reeves over how they want to proceed. Now, Reeves reportedly wants to pull a Joker move and cast a younger actor to play Batman at an earlier time in Bruce's career, but Ben Affleck keeps kind of flip-flopping on whether or not he's ready to hang up the cowl once and for all. Now, to put things in perspective for you, you will literally see an Alfred prequel TV series before this movie ever comes out. That's a real thing. It's gonna happen. But, I don't know, Reeves is a great director, so it should be worth the wait, but in the meantime, <laughs> yikes! Justice League Part 2. This time, Henry Cavill has a soul patch that he can't shave, and it'll look just as weird. The real apocalypse, or whatever CG monstrosity they put on top of his real mouth. Why open a shot? Why open the movie on his mouth? Why'd you do that? Look, all jokes aside, this movie feels like it's in limbo until DC gets its cinematic universe in order. We're definitely gonna get another one at some point, but whether it pits our heroes against Darkseid remains to be seen. Whatever happens, it'll almost undoubtedly be without Zack Snyder at the helm. Not a value judgment, just a fact. Anyway, let's keep going. Deathstroke. While it sounds like something they'd call masturbation in an abstinence-only sex ed class, Deathstroke is in fact a master assassin, murderer extraordinaire, and nemesis to the Teen Titans, Arrow, and basically every major DC hero at one point or another. So far, all we've seen of Deathstroke is Joe Manganiello chilling on Lex Luthor's yacht at the end of Justice League. Now, Warner Brothers had reportedly entered into talks with the Raid director Gareth Evans to bring this anti-heroic assassin saga to life, but right now it feels like Deathstroke is sadly stuck on the island from the beginning of the CW, W's arrow with no Oliver or better beard dye anywhere in sight. Lobo. Look, I'd say that nobody wants a Lobo movie, but I also didn't expect Venom to shatter box office records in October, so here we are. Lobo's basically a sentient monster energy drink. He's an intergalactic motorcycle ride and bounty hunter who is intended to be a parody of overly grim and gritty comic book storytelling. Now, Guy Ritchie was attached to direct at one point, but more recently, Michael Bay's name was being bandied about. And if done correctly, this could be DC's answer to Deadpool. If done incorrectly, it could be DC's answer to Ghost Rider. Either way, guess I'll see it. Justice League Dark. They should rename this movie Justice League Dank because it sounds pretty sick. Basically, this is the version of the Justice League that combats occult forces, the paranormal, all manner of magic-based mayhem. That's their purview. Comprised of characters like John Constantine, Zatanna, Swamp Thing, Deadman, Etrigan the Demon, and Madame Xanadu, Justice League Dark fights the forces of evil that are too Stygian and sinister for the regular old boring Justice League to handle. Now, unfortunately, this film seems to be hexed against keeping a creative team in place, because Guillermo del Toro wrote a script for it in 2013, but then he left. Then Edge of Tomorrow's Doug Lyman joined to direct in 2016, but he left as well. And now, much like me, it's trapped in hell. Green Lantern Corps. Look. There's no way this can be any worse than what Ryan Reynolds subjected us to back in 2011. 
It's just impossible. I know, right? With the script being penned by Jeff Johns, a writer known in particular for his excellent Green Lantern comics, and a tone rumored to be basically lethal weapon in space, this sounds like a recipe for success for DC. All you have to do, literally all you have to do, is avoid making your villain a giant cloud. Don't do it. The mummy did that, you're not gonna do it better. Also, put Guy Gardner in this movie, you cowards. Put him in there. Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Suicide Squad 2. That's right, folks, Suicide Squad is happening, and it might be the most anticipated movie in DC's current lineup, which is a wild statement, thanks to Warner Brothers poaching James Gunn after Marvel kicked him to the curb over some old tweets. Will Gunn include even more helicopter crashes than the first one set to the sweet strains of 1970s Yacht Rock? Will someone finally answer Will Smith's question about what kind of squad we are? Will Jai Courtney finally win his Oscar for Captain Boomerang? The answers to some of these and less probably won't be coming anytime soon, so let's just all resume trying to guess what obscure villains and B-sides will eventually get to hear and see when Gunn sticks it to Marvel in the wildest redemption story imaginable. Seriously, I can't believe this. You guys f***ed up so bad. Good going, DC. Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. It's the story of a disgraced football star from the future who travels back in time to be a superhero and a tech genius who wears a highly advanced beetle costume who have to team up to save the day, presumably first and foremost, from themselves. Oh, and did I mention there's a snarky robot named Skeets? Because there's a snarky robot named Skeets. Booster Gold and Blue Beetle is being directed by DC TV mega producer Greg Berlanti, and they're eyeing Zach Penn to write the script. And honestly, little's known about what it's going to be at this point, apart from the fact that it's going to be a comedy heavy superhero buddy cop movie. Now, fingers crossed they're going to keep Skeets as a secret villain like they did in New 52, because honestly, what could be more terrifying than an evil Alexa? She won't play what you want on Spotify. She won't play Despacito. Gotham City Sirens. No, this isn't the story of a bunch of EMTs called to clean up after Batman administering splints to fractured bad guy bones. It's the movie adaptation of a comic starring Catwoman, Poison Ivy, and Harley Quinn as an anti-heroic girl gang. Suicide Squad director David Ayer is supposed to helm this movie, and he posted a mysterious picture of the villain Black Mask to his Twitter feed, and also shared a photo of him with Harley Quinn creator Paul Dini, but... Given what we know about Birds of Prey, it seems like Harley Quinn's left this girl group behind, making it increasingly unlikely that this film's ever gonna come to pass. But hey, at least we'll always have Bright 2, too damn bright. Man of Steel 2. In the immortal words of that old McDonald's commercial, hey, it could happen, but probably not. At least we'll always have The Witcher and Henry Cavill's mysterious Instagram post about maybe getting a tattoo made out of his dog's blood. And if you don't believe me, look it up because it's weird. Deadshot. So that's it, huh? We're some sort of spin off side squad? I'm sorry I keep making this joke, but I have to because there's so many goddamn movies. That's right, folks. Will Smith's Deadshot, the man who's handsome at aiming, could get his very own movie. Smith revealed that he's in talks with WB about this film on Instagram while bungee jumping in the Grand Canyon to celebrate his 50th birthday because that, folks, is how you celebrate a half a century of life in the biggest Willy style possible. That's some big Willy style. Nightwing. While Nightwing might be overshadowed recently by a certain four-letter word from Robin on Titans, Dick Grayson is still set to get his very own big screen adventure. Directed by the Lego Batman movie director Chris McKay and written by Bill Dubuque, Nightwing is said to be a badass action version of everyone's favorite former circus boy. Actually, you know what? We should just call him a snackrobat because Nightwing is thick as hell. But I digress. Chris McKay's also working on a Dungeons and Dragons movie too, so... It mostly just feels like he's read through my Google search history and is now turning that into movies. And I gotta say, good luck, buddy. It's about to get real weird. Batgirl. For years, fans have asked DC Comics to give them what they truly wanted, a Batgirl solo film on the big screen. And then in 2017, DC said, okay, sure, but uh, Joss Whedon's gonna make it. And then a great darkness spread over the land for about a year or so until Joss realized he didn't have a story to tell, so he left the project. And then there was much rejoicing. A new scribe, Bumblebee's Christina Hodson, was brought on board to record the tale of Barbara Gordon for one and all. When we'll actually see it as a subject of much mystery, but hey, good things take time. And please, take your time with this. Don't mess it up. 
Black Adam. No, the movie isn't just Shazam, but thick. Black Adam stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson as the corrupted predecessor to Shazam, Teth Adam. We don't know whether or not we'll see Black Adam as an out-and-out -out villain or as more of an anti-hero, but something tells me this will at least be as good as The Rock's last trip to Egyptian-infused mysticism, The Scorpion King. Now, production's tentatively set to start in 2019, but considering we've been waiting since 1945 to see this character on the big screen, I think we can wait a little longer if need be. No one's like, oh sh**, it's been almost 70 years. Where's my Black Adam movie? No one. Supergirl. Now, we haven't had a Supergirl movie since 1984, but this time it looks like we're going back in time even further with an origin story rumored to take place in the 1970s in a script from the Cloverfield Paradox's Oren Uziel. I hope I pronounced your name right. Honestly, I'm on board for this movie, especially if they bring back Popeyes in very prominent marketing shots. Look up the 1984 movie. It's just Supergirl standing in front of a chicken restaurant. Why? The Joker. Because much like Pringles, with Joker movies, once you pop, you cannot stop. It is a cursed object. And Warner Brothers clearly cannot stop making Joker movies based on this episode. Hopefully this movie's just gonna be comprised of all that unused footage of Jared Leto from Suicide Squad, including a 16 minute one take scene of him meticulously laying all those guns and knives on the floor before making weird snow angels in the middle of them and going, ah, 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 why is that your lap? Or maybe it won't happen at all. Leto's supposed to be playing Morbius the Living Vampire in Sony's Marvel Universe, a role that will hopefully require him to be far less in character all the time always. So, silver lining, maybe it won't happen. New Gods. Jack Kirby was a deeply talented and deeply weird man. And one of the weirdest things he ever created was the fourth world for DC. It was this story about the New Gods, an epic story about the godlike inhabitants of two far-flung planets, the paradisical New Genesis and the nightmarish Apocalypse. Now we've seen inklings of the fourth world in the DCEU so far through Justice League Steppenwolf and its many, many parademons, which are basically sort of like the military forces of Apocalypse. But now director Ava DuVernay is looking to tell us a story about the new gods on their home turf, and hopefully that means we're gonna get to see Mr. Miracle, Orion, and Big Barda finally on the big screen. And also, it hopefully means we won't get a post-credit scene at that time that Superman and Big Barda accidentally shot a porno because that was very real and very uncomfortable. What a, what a huge low point in comics. <laughs> Harley Quinn versus the Joker. Oh, what's that? You thought I was done talking about movies with Harley Quinn and the Joker? <laughs> oh, goodness. That's rich, like Jeff Bezos showering in truffle oil or, I don't know, Bitcoin in a top hat or something. No, no, my sweet summer child. This episode will never end because there's always going to be between 1 and 17 more movies about Gotham City's worst couple. The film, written and directed by Bad Santa writers Glenn Ficarra and John Rikwa, is said to explore the toxic relationship between these two characters, which actually sounds like code for a big screen version of Paul Dini and Bruce Timm's Mad Love comic. And honestly, I don't hate the sound of that. I'd just rather rewatch the new Batman Adventures episode instead. Stop making these. And those are all the DC Comics movies currently in development that we know about. But tell me, which of these do you most want to see? What would you add to this list? Let me know in the comments below and give me an extended thumbs up while you're there. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And while you're there, make sure to hit that notification bell or you could run the risk of missing out on next week's episode. It's all about an Egyptologist who invites three different men to a long lost pyramid to determine which one could secretly be her father and which two to sacrifice to the cursed monster within the mausoleum's depths in Mummy Mia. Until next time, keep on digging.